Hello everyone! Uh, watching a YouTube video can be fun, entertaining, uh, educational, uh, but reading a good article can uh, also be those things. Uh, so that's why uh, in the link, uh, there is a link in the description below uh, where you can read uh, a full article about Demis Hassabis. Uh, he is the founder of DeepMind and, uh, well, uh, directly responsible for AlphaZero existing. So uh, I decided uh, since AlphaZero has been uh, filling our days with joy, uh, it would be very nice to see a game by Demis Hassabis, the founder of DeepMind. And uh, in the article you will find a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, Demis isn't, wasn't only a chess prodigy, he was a prodigy in pretty much everything he did. Um, well, he, when he was eight, when he was six years old, uh, he won the under eight London Championship, and uh, I mean, uh, he bought his first computer, the ZX Spectrum, uh, at the age of eight, with the money he won uh, in a chess match. So a lot of interesting uh, stuff there. Uh, while he was, when he was uh, 13 years old, uh, he became a chess master, and uh, he was the second highest rated, uh, second highest rated uh, under 14 year old in the world. Uh, first one was, of course, Judith Polgar. So I, you know, I encourage you to read it and uh, let's see, let's see this game. He's playing against uh, Peter Hein Nielsen. Uh, the game was played in 1992, and Peter Nielsen is a Danish grandmaster. He wasn't a grandmaster uh, at the time this game was played. Uh, I think uh, two years after this game, he became an international master. So he was definitely on the rise. Uh, and his uh, Wikipedia page also says that he became a grandmaster in 1994. But, uh, you know, it sounds a bit weird that he became an international master and a grandmaster in the same year. So, you know, uh, Wikipedia, you know, doesn't always uh, tell you the truth. Uh, so if anyone knows uh, when uh, Peter Nielsen became a grandmaster, do share in the comments. But it, it also, it might be in 1994. Uh, but that being said, let's see the game. Uh, and uh, Demis Hatsabis was rated around 2300 uh, when this game was played. Uh, C4, Demis has the white pieces. Uh, G6, uh, we have the English opening and G6 is something called the Great Snake variation. Uh, E4, Bishop to G7, Knight to C3. Uh, D6, we have G3, E5 now, Bishop to G2 and C6. Uh, Knight G to E2, preparing to castle. Uh, bishop to e6, d3, now f5, and uh, Demis castles. Uh, knight to f6, and b3. Uh, Nielsen castles, bishop to a3 now, uh, pinning this pawn, uh, x-raying the rook on f8, rook to f7, uh, e captures on f5, bishop captures on f5, and d4 now. And the white uh, managed to solve all of his problems in the opening, he managed to push d4, uh, Still have to, still has to develop the queen and uh, get the rooks into the game. Uh, knight to a6, and we have d5. And here Nielsen has the option of either pushing c5 uh, or maybe capturing, and after knight captures something like e4. Uh, but then you're stuck with this d6 pawn, uh, a backwards weak pawn for the rest of the game. Not something you look forward to. Uh, so after d5, he decided to close the position with c5. Uh, we have h3. Now h5, uh, f3, now definitely preparing to push g4, uh, h4, and now g4. Bishop to d7, and now queen can come to c2. The queen is developed and the rooks are ready to enter the game. Uh, and now this queen is attacking the g6 pawn. And how do you defend this? It's not at all clear. Uh, the best way to do it would be uh, to play something like king to h7. And uh, this <clears throat> uh, this seems like a, this seems like a counterintuitive move. You you know place your king uh, in front of the queen, but uh, black is uh, actually the black king is fine here. White would uh, go for something like bishop to c1 to transfer the bishop to the other side, uh, and after a move like b5, go bishop to g5, and uh, it's it's a uh, it's a better position for for white, but uh, but it's a very sharp position. So black can definitely hope for something. Uh, but instead, after queen c2, uh, Nielsen played the g5. He defended the pawn by pushing it, but he allows queen to g6. Uh, now the queen is uh, really in there and uh, threatening to grab the g5 pawn. Uh, knight to h7 defending the pawn, and uh, here Nielsen offers this uh, d6 pawn. And it's a very interesting variation what happens if queen captures on d6. Uh, if queen captures on d6, then rook to f6. 
kind of almost trapping the queen. The queen has to capture the pawn on e5. You capture, and now this bishop, uh, you line up your queen with this bishop on, on g7. And, uh, okay, the rook doesn't have any discoveries at the moment, uh, not any good discoveries. But after queen to a5, uh, attacking the bishop on a3, uh, bishop to b2, and now rook, uh, rook to e8, uh, attacking the queen, you only have one square for your queen. All the other squares are taken. Uh, you have to go to h2. And this is the position you have to see uh, before you decide whether you want to capture the pawn on d6. And you have to evaluate what, what, what do you do now. Is black better here? Is white better here? And it's uh, it's pretty complicated. I mean, how, how do you get your queen uh, out of h2? Uh, in the end, uh, then Demis decided not to capture the d6 pawn, but he decided... Uh, he wants to play knight to e4, and this is a very elegant solution to this problem. Uh, now he's uh, again threatening to capture on, on d6 with the knight. Uh, he's also threatening to capture on g5, and uh, if uh, if black decided now to give up the d6 pawn, he's falling apart. Then his uh, c5 pawn is weak, his e5 pawn is weak, and uh, this is terrible. Uh, so you can't give up this pawn. You have to defend it. The only way to defend it is... Uh, rook to f6 and uh, now you simply capture it knight captures on f6 was played with check uh, queen captures queen captures and bishop captures now demis is uh, up the exchange and uh, even though nielsen at the time this game was played was rated around uh, around something below 2450 uh, you know a very high rating uh, but uh, demis is a very capable player he's able to win this being up the exchange uh, knight to c3 was played bishop to e8 now knight to e4, attacking the bishop and the pawn on d6, bishop to e7 defending, uh, rook a to d1, now bishop to g6, uh, bishop to c1, uh, we have king to g7, a3 now, uh, rook to c8, uh, bishop to e3, knight to b8, the knight has to come back into the game somehow, uh, rook to c1, knight to d7, uh, rook to f2, Bishop captures on e4, f captures on e4, and knight h to f8. And now uh, rook c to f1, uh, threatening to bring the rook to f7 and win the bishop. So bishop to f6, uh, we have rook to f5, and uh, the rook is the rook is well placed on f5. Uh, black doesn't have a light square bishop to kick it away from there. Uh, and you don't have time for knight g6, knight d7, because your g-pawn is hanging, g5-pawn. So knight to h7, defending, and now rook to b1, preparing to push the pawns on the queen side. Uh, b6, we have bishop to f1, and uh, the idea is that this bishop will uh, will at some point come to d3, then c2, uh, and then at some point to a4, and will uh, will be very strong on this diagonal. Uh, knight to d to f8, b4 now, uh, king to f7. B captures on c5, uh, we have E captures, D captures on c5, and rook to f2. Now the rook is coming uh, to the queen side, knight to d7, now bishop to d3, bishop is now coming to a4, uh, king to e7, uh, bishop to c2, uh, knight back to f8, and now a4. Uh, preparing a5 to break open this structure, uh, knight to d7, uh, now a5 was played, uh, rook to c7, and the bishop to a4. And uh, in this position, uh, Peter Nielsen resigned the game. It uh, doesn't really matter what you play. You're, you're going to lose this knight, and then uh, then white is simply breaking through. Uh, you could try something like uh, knight h to f8 to defend this, uh, but after rook f5, now your knight isn't really able to defend the g5 pawn anymore, and you're falling apart. Uh, rook to b, b7 maybe to defend the pawn, but then bishop to c6... Uh, this is this is all terrible uh, after something like rook here uh, you you simply either capture or go rook a1 probably rook a1 and after b captures then you capture and uh, black is black is terrible here uh, you're losing this pawn you're losing this pawn and uh, a player strong like uh, someone as strong as peter nielsen doesn't want to play this end game anymore so yeah uh, after this uh, bishop to a4 move, Peter Nielsen resigned the game, and it was a very nice victory for, for the founder of DeepMind, uh, Demis Hassabis. So, 
yeah, I was very, I was uh, really, I mean, I'm not surprised that uh, Demis Hasavis is a chess player. I, I was just very surprised to see that he was such a strong chess player at, at such a very young age. And uh, he also uh, created uh, his own video game when he was 17 years old uh, called Theme Park. And then he uh, founded uh, his own video game company. And then later in uh, 2010, he founded DeepMind. Uh, which he later, I don't know, I think it was some three years ago or something, uh, sold it to Google for uh, somewhere I read 400 million pounds, somewhere I read 260 million pounds, but it doesn't really matter. You know, if you have uh, millions in pounds in the same sentence, that's, uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, but, uh, you know, 400 million pounds sounds, sounds like, like a lot of money. So yeah, uh, congratulations to uh, Demis Hasabis for such uh, great accomplishments in pretty much uh, any field uh, he touched. And uh, I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I do hope you read the article. There's uh, quite a lot of interesting information about Demis. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.